Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration, praise him, praise the King of Kings, praise the Lord of Lords, praise the Ancient of Days, praise the Unchangeable Changer, praise the Highest, who is higher than the Highest, praise the Greatest, who is greater than the greatest. Praise the ancient of days, who is older than the oldest. Praise the wisest, who is wiser than the wisest. Praise the one who is the richest, richer than the richest. Praise the one who is the alpha, Praise the one who is the Omega. Praise him who is the unchangeable changer. Praise him who is coming again. Praise him, praise him. Give him glory, give him honor. Let him hear your voice. So that you will be the first one he will come to. To release the first healing for tonight. Praise Him. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. Blessed, 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 blessed be Your name, O Lord. Thank You, Father. Thank You, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. You are the mighty God. The great I am Alleluia Alleluia You are the mighty God The great I am Alleluia Alleluia, Alleluia, you are the mighty God, the, the great I am, Alleluia, Alleluia. Father, you are the great I am. Long before the mountains were brought forth, you are God. So I know that tonight, you are going to uproot mountains. You are the one who spoke and said, let there be light. And there was light. So I know that tonight, Darkness is going to lose its hold on your children. You are the great physician. You never refer cases. You are the ultimate healer. So I know that tonight, as many of us as have come to the last bus stop, we are going to shout for joy. Yeah. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Yeah. Almighty God, prove yourself tonight. Yeah. Heal your people. 
make every one of us whole. Before we leave here tonight, Father, let your healing virtue begin to flow through us. Thank you, Almighty God. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. If I shake hands with one or two people and say, Good evening, God is going to surprise you tonight. Okay. Well, as of tonight, five babies have been delivered in the camp here. <laughs> One boy and four girls. Let the girl shout praise the Lord. Let the boy shout hallelujah. <laughs> Tomorrow, by the grace of God, I'll be ministering from the new auditorium. And of course, you know, this will then be the overflow. And tomorrow we'll be talking on from curses to blessings. Tomorrow is an extremely important day. Why? Because there are two major forces on earth controlling the life of any man. One is curses, the other is blessings. So whatever is happening in the life of any man can be traced either to curses or to blessings. In the name that's above every other name, Every curse that may still remain in your life will be terminated by tomorrow. And the blessings you need to reach your goal rapidly, unhindered, assisted by the Almighty God Himself, you will receive tomorrow. But tonight, I'm going to be speaking to you on healing virtues. Healing virtues. Luke chapter 6, from verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6, from verse 17 to 19. And while you are opening your Bibles, will you please help me give the Lord a big round of applause for the choir. That, that was good. That was good tonight. And then give another round of applause to the young man who brought the first message. Bami Dele study event. That was good. That was good. All right. Luke chapter 6, from verse 17 to 19. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples. 
and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, we came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, one of the testimonies of this Congress will be, and he healed them all. When God made man, he was perfect. I mean, man was perfect. Physically perfect. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 31. Genesis 1 from verse 26 to 31. The Almighty God looked at the man he had made and he said, Wow, this is very good. And when God says something is very good, you can be sure that they must be very good. As a matter of fact, David said, Thank you, Father. The Lord said, there's someone here. The doctors have been worried about the pain in your chest. Uh, Lord asked me to tell you, the pain is gone. In Psalm 139, verse 14, Psalm 139, verse 14, David said, I was fearfully and wonderfully made. I was so perfect that it, it was fearful. You know that of all the billions of people in the world at any one time, you will never find two people exactly the same. God is so creative. He made everyone unique. Oh, they may look alike to, your, to you looking at uh, identical twins, but check their fingerprints. You'll discover that nobody is exactly the same at the other. That's how wonderful God is. But then sin came. And when sin came, death came. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to 19. Genesis 3 from verse 1 to 19. Because sin came, God pronounced a curse on man. And said, you came from the dust, you will return to the dust. And immediately after that one, the body began to malfunction. The body that was perfect before began to malfunction because sickness is an agent of death. And so, to repair man, when man began to multiply, etc., etc., according to Psalm 107, from verse 17 to 20, Psalm 107, 17 to 20, the Bible says, whenever man sinned and they get into trouble as a result and they begin to suffer, they become so sick that they can't even eat. Whenever they repent and they cry to God in their distress, He will send His word and heal them. God will just turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, and He is the word. John chapter 1, 
from verse 1 to 3, John 1, 1 to 3. And it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Verse 3, by him were all things made. And without him, nothing was made. So God will say to him, you made them, go and repair them. So in Psalm 107, verse 17 to 20, when they cry to him, he will send his word and he will heal them. I have good news for you. God is already sending his word. Hmm. Okay, Lord. Daddy wants me to remind you of the story of a man during one of our Holy Ghost services in uh, the National Stadium in Surulere. The Word of God just came and said there was a man who had only one kidney because the second had been removed and the only one remaining is also beginning to give trouble and God said well tell him I've given him two new kidneys. Well, I think that's a word for somebody already. That was Friday night. The following Monday, the man concerned ran to his doctor to examine him. In the testimony that followed, the doctor said, I was the one who removed the first kidney. On the day we were removing that kidney, everything that could go wrong went wrong. Light went out. Uh, problem with anesthesia, etc., etc. He said the, the operation that was to last for about one hour it lasted eight hours. So he said, I can't forget this man. But the man now went to the same doctor on Monday. And the doctor said, I can't believe you are the one. Because now, there are two healthy kidneys. The Lord asked me to tell you that story because there's someone here. The doctors have removed something important from your body. You are getting a brand new one now. Now when Jesus came down, when he, the word, became flesh and he came down, you will find that healing was a big part of his ministry. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Acts 10, verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. He just kept on healing. Healing. In Luke chapter 5, verse 17, Luke 5, verse 17, the Bible tells us even as he taught, anytime people gather together and he's teaching them, the power of God is always present to heal. At every place where Jesus preached, healing followed. And he's about to repeat that here tonight. Now, because he could not possibly touch everybody that came, he got the healing going through something that the Bible calls the healing virtue. Mark chapter 5, for example. Mark 5, from verse 25 to 34. Mark 5, 25 to 34. Tells you the story of the woman with the issue of blood. 
there was a crowd around about Jesus. And she came from behind anyway and said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know there is enough power flowing through him. And she struggled through, touched the hem of his garment, and she was healed. The Bible said, Jesus now said, how who touched me? And the people said, oh, you can see the crowd trogging you. She said, no, no, no. Somebody touched me because virtue has gone out of me. Before I leave this place tonight, the healing virtue of the Most High God is going to touch somebody. And in Luke chapter 6, verse 19, Luke 6, verse 19, he said, it's not just one case. It's just not, it's not one case of the woman with the issue of blood. He said, the people were struggling to touch him, the multitude. Somehow they realized that there is enough healing power in him, flowing so mightily, that even if we can just touch him, and all who touched him were made whole. I'm begging you tonight, touch him. One of the greatest ways of touching him is by faith. Just believe that he will do it and it will be done tonight. Now, he was using the virtue flowing through him to heal those who could not come, I mean, that he could not lay his hand upon. I mean, believe it or not, when the Holy Ghost service came to this campground, <laughs> at the first auditorium near the expressway. We were few. And so I will always lay hands on everybody. But can you imagine me laying hands on everybody here? By the time I finish, I think you will have to lay hands on me. So God kept on using the old method of sending his word. Like in the case of Mark chapter 10, 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, Bartimaeus cried unto him for mercy. They brought him finally to Jesus. He said, what do you want? He said, I want to receive my sight. All right, receive your sight. The word of God is coming to somebody right now. Receive your healing. In Matthew chapter 8 from verse 5 to 13, Matthew 8 from verse 5 to 13, a centurion came to him. Please, my servant is sick. He said, no problem. I come and heal him. He said, no, you don't have to. Waste your time coming to my house. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be made whole. He was touched. Jesus was touched by that kind of faith. I'm here today representing the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not Jesus. <laughs> you should know that for sure. I'm not Jesus at all. Jesus never ate Pandadia. But it's my God. And I'm assuring you, as I'm standing here, he's standing here with me, and he's sending his word through me, and he's saying to somebody right now, receive your healing. Now, 
because the need was so great, so many people needing healing, so he began to delegate the healing power to his disciples. For example, in Matthew chapter 10, from verse 5 to 8, Matthew 10, 5 to 8, when he has chosen 12 to be with him, he delegated the power to heal to them, heal the sick, cleanse lepers. He even asked them to go ahead and raise the dead. I thank God for all the testimonies we had tonight. I'm amazed that some of us, because we have had so many great testimonies, when we hear them now, it doesn't move us anymore. There are at least two testimonies here tonight of people who took an anointed handkerchief and used them to raise the dead. And we were just sitting down. Uh, we have heard that one before. That is not happening anywhere else. God is blessing us. Let somebody shout hallelujah to him. Now, so the disciples went about healing the sick, cleansing lepers, raising the dead. Now, when he was about to leave for heaven, he now delegated the power to heal the sick to every believer. Not just the special twelve. He said in Mark chapter sixteen, from verse seventeen to eighteen. Mark sixteen seventeen to eighteen. He said, "When you lay hands on the sick, they will recover." Know what he was saying? The healing virtue will flow through your hands. Well, only those who believe will say amen to that. I told you yesterday the purpose of this Congress is to move you from receiving to becoming. Not just to receive your healing, but to become a healer in the mighty name of Jesus. He gave them, all believers, the power to heal the sick. And so we find Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 8, Acts 3, verse 1 to 8, when Peter saw a man who had been lame for a long time. Just went to him and said, well, I have no money for you. But I have something better. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Grabbed him by the hand. The healing virtue flowed. And the man got up, jumping, leaping, praising God. Now, knowing that some sicknesses and diseases we later surface. He made provision for that too. Because in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, there was no cancer, you know. There was no HIV. Or whatever, AIDS. <laughs> there was no coronavirus. So he made provision for that too. In John chapter 14 verse 12. John 14 verse 12. He says, if you just believe in me, that's all he's asking for. The works that I do, 
you shall do also. That means you will heal the sick, you will cleanse lepers, you will raise the dead. And then he went on to say, and greater works than this shall you do. Whether you believe it or not, somebody will come out of this Congress sharing testimonies that will frighten you. When you read Acts chapter 19, from verse 11 to 12, Acts 19, 11 to 12, the Bible tells us that God performed special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body, from his body, they bring handkerchiefs or aprons and they take them to the sick. And they were all healed. When Jesus was here, and they were touching the hem of his garment, he was right inside the garment. But in the case of Paul, he would just take the handkerchief and send greater works. There was a time when I could lay hands on all your handkerchiefs. Then the crowd grew. And that is said to me, you don't have to touch the handkerchiefs. Just wave your hand. That's greater works. And when you hear all those who are testifying, say, the handkerchief that daddy anointed, the handkerchief that daddy anointed, I didn't touch those handkerchiefs. I waved my hands. And as I'm waving my hand to you just now, receive your healing. And then you find in Acts chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, Acts 5, 14 to 16, it tells us how God performed great miracles by the hands of the apostles. And he singled out Peter and said, even the shadow of Peter began to heal. The Lord wants to move you from receiving your healing to becoming the carrier of his healing virtue. The old ones here, the elders, can tell you of a situation that happened in the very first auditorium. We were having a Holy Ghost night. And God spoke and said, there are some people in the congregation having severe backache that they've not been able to bend to touch their toes for a long time. He said, call them forward. And I did. I have witnesses here. After they came forward, he asked me to dance around them. You better know the voice of God. And one of the miracles God will perform for you during this Congress is that he will give you the ability to hear him. I, if I didn't know his voice, I would have said, ah, dance around them. What, what will I say I'm dancing about? I'm rejoicing your back is aching. But I know the voice of the one who called me. So I called them forward. I told them, this is what God asked me to do. And I began to dance around them. After about five minutes, I said, that's enough. 
Tell them to touch their toes. And they were all healed. I, I did not touch them. But he healed them. I'm not going to be the one touching you tonight, so though some people will. But even before all these elders begin to minister to you, receive your healing. Oh, please say the amen as if you believe. But then now, I'm beginning to conclude because <laughs> it's already working. But the point is, the real point is, as a believer, you are not even supposed to be sick at all. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that passage is saying, if you can receive salvation because they crucified him, then you can receive healing because they beat him before crucifying him. He said, he bore your sin in his own body on the tree so that you can now become dead to sin, receive salvation. Live unto righteousness. And then by his stripes, you are healed. If you can look up to him on the cross and say, ah, you died for me on the cross. You shed your blood for me. That's why I am saved. We received it by faith. We know we are saved because we believe Jesus died for us on the cross. Is that correct? And Peter is saying, if you can receive salvation by believing him who died on the cross for you, he said, the next thing you receive is healing by his stripes. As a believer, you are not supposed to be sick at all. That is why it is written in James chapter 5. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. The Lord, <laughs> the Lord is saying in the crowd, he said, uh, a fellow is saying, Ah, Satan, your secret is out. The Lord asked me to tell you, I will confirm it to you. James chapter 5, from verse 14 to 15, said, Is any sick among you? You know what that means? You are not supposed to be sick. It's now safe for adventure. Just in case. Just in case. I say, in that case, then send for the elders. Let them anoint that fellow with oil and pray for him. And he says something very interesting. Read the whole passage. He said, not only will the prayer of faith heal the sick after they've anointed that fellow with oil. He said, if the fellow committed any sin that led to that sickness, he will be forgiven. 
if you sit down and study that passage clearly, God is saying, if you are a believer, and you fall sick, examine yourself. Very serious statement. Check your Christian life. Are you living in 100% obedience to God? <laughs> you said that have you ever been sick after you got born again? Oh yes. I faced some challenges. But almost invariably when I asked my daddy, what did I do wrong? The answer comes back almost Im immediately. You are overworking the body. He built the body to rest once in a while. But some of us, God have mercy on us. <laughs> Some of us will rest when we get to heaven. But he said, if anyone should be sick among you, the obedience is not complete in certain areas. You're not doing everything exactly the way I asked you to do it. But if you fall sick, if at all, you fall sick, send for the elders. And I want you to check, check the Bible very well. You never read of one of those 11. Forget Judas Iscariot. You can't read of any one of the 11 who fell sick. Not one. It's never eating. And Peter had a headache. And John had a backache. The Bible would have told us. He told us when the mother-in-law of Peter had a fever. Let somebody say, God have mercy on me. <laughs> he said, send for the elders. Let them come. Let them anoint that fellow. We toil, pray for him the prayer of faith. So, uh, I will heal the fellow. I will forgive whatever sins led to the sickness. Now, when he says send for the elders, he's not talking about elders in age. He's not talking about send for the very, very old people. <laughs> Not too long ago, one of my sons who is pastoring a youth church brought uh, some officers in his youth church to me. And he says, sir, I'm here with the elders of the church. <laughs> And the oldest of them is less than 30 years old. <laughs> elders of the church. I said, <laughs> you are the elders? They laughed. It's not talking about old age. It's talking about elders in faith. You know, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, 1 Peter 2, verse 2, he talked about newborn babes. That's you've just been born again and he said you must desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby so he's talking about those who have been along walking with Christ for quite a while 
Or he might be talking about some people who have gifts of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you can read the whole chapter if you want. But in verse 28 there, when he was talking about gifts, he talked about gifts of healings. Not just one gift. Gifts of healings. Let me assure you, the anointing that is required to heal headache is not the same kind of anointing that will take care of cancer. As we say among us, power passes power. So when he says, same for the elders, mm. Look for those who have been around for a while. They know what they are doing. They are close to God. They are loaded with the Holy Spirit, loaded with the Word of God. They've been ordained. Some of them have been ordained three times. Ordained the deacon, ordained the assistant pastor, ordained the pastor. The oil has been flowing on them regularly for a long time. It's a sin for them. I mean, you, you, you know, for example, in Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 42, Acts 9, 36 to 42, a woman died. And they sent for Peter. They didn't send for just anybody. They sent for Peter, as an elder. Tonight, following the instruction of the Most High God, we're going to anoint everybody here with oil. We didn't have to send for the elders. The elders are here. And the oil is going to flow. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for as many of us as believe, this is the night of our healing. But don't forget, Jesus says, it will be unto you according to your faith. So before we come around and do the anointing, because we will do the anointing for healing. The elders are to do the job. They didn't even ask the fellow that is going to be anointed to do the praying. After they have anointed you, we are going to pray. But the prayer we are going to pray will be different from what you think. But before we can do that, because when a woman came to Jesus Christ saying, my daughter needs help. In Matthew chapter 15, from verse 21 to 28, Matthew 15, 21 to 28, the Bible tells us that Jesus told the woman, healing is children's bread. I cannot give the bread of children to dogs. That's what he said. In other words, he said, if you are not a child of God, they can pour a bucket of oil on your head. Nothing is going to happen. He knows those who are his own. The Bible said he came to his own, his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them give he power to be called children of God. That's why tonight, very, very quickly, if you know that you are not sure of your salvation, so that the miracle of this wonderful night will not pass you by, run forward and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. I'm going to count from one, all right, because some of you are far away, from one to ten. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, come and stand before the altar, 
before I count ten. And I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. If you know you are coming from a long distance, you better run. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Okay, those of you are already in front and those of you are already on the way, cry to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him to have mercy on you and to save your soul. Tell him. You are saying bye-bye to the devil. Now you want to serve Jesus Christ and him alone. Ask him to wash you clean with his blood. Pray that the almighty God, the Savior, will save you today and give you genuine salvation. Now the rest of us, please stretch your hands towards these people and intercede for them that the almighty God who saved your soul may bring salvation to them. Pray that God will give them genuine salvation. Cry to God for them. And those of you on the way, you have to hurry up now because I want to be praying for salvation in a moment. If you are on your way, just keep coming. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you because tonight is that night that you have set aside for healing. Thank you because you said in your word, Anyone who come unto you, you will know why cast out. These people have come. Father, please receive them in Jesus' name. I'm asking Lord God Almighty that this very night you will save their souls. Your blood will wash them clean. 
you will write their names in the book of life. You will receive them into the family of God. And when they cry to you tonight, Lord God Almighty, please answer them by fire. When they are anointed tonight, my Father and my God, let the anointing work for them also. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I, I want the counselors to please come. Come and come and attend to them here. Counselors, could you come very quickly? Because we're going to need the front of the altar very soon. Counselors, are you already out here? Anyway, uh, those of you who have come forward, I want to rejoice with you. Because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. Um, so I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. God bless you. So you stay where you are. The counselors are already coming. They will give you a card. You fill the card very quickly. And after that, you can go back to your seats. Congratulations. Let me hear you shout hallelujah anyway. Yeah, the counselors are coming. Just wait where you are. They will attend to you in a moment. Now the, the rest of us, as we wait for our new brothers and sisters to join us back, we will continue to praise the Almighty God in advance for what he's about to do tonight. God bless you, choir.
go back to your seats and begin to call on the Almighty God to say this, don't let this oil be in vain over my life. I receive my healing now. I receive my wholeness now. And you keep on talking to God. The pastors are more than enough to take care of everybody. So, and we will not stop until everybody has been anointed. So no need to rush. So the pastors will come. They will line up in front of you. And you go to the nearest one to you and get anointed. God bless you. Choir, please continue.
These are the days of God's power These are the days for the Lord to reign For reign on the Spirit in all the anybody that has not been anointed I will advise you to come come to the front and the, there will be a pastor there to attend to you now the rest of us will want to cry to the almighty God first of all you are going to say Lord I thank you because I've received my healing and I'm asking Lord that through this anointing your healing virtue will be flowing through me. That anyone I lay hands upon will receive instant healing. Go ahead. Let's talk to the Almighty God. Father, I thank you. I've received my healing. All the world will hear my testimony very soon. And please, because of this anointing, let your healing virtue begin to flow through me. So that from now on, anyone I lay hands on, we receive their own healings too. Let's go ahead and talk to God. Thank you, Father. Glory 
ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਿਆਹ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ